Here, take the camera now. Let's get it, let's get it. Ready? Oh, sorry. Hmm. Uh, good afternoon. Um, today I want to inform you guys of a uh, special topic that I personally feel is um, not getting enough attention in today's world with, you know, so much things going on that it's kind of relevant to. Um, I want to talk about the U.S. prison population and how it's so high. Um, it's actually higher than any country in the world, including China and Russia. And even though the U.S. only makes up um, 5% of the global population, it, it holds 25% of the prison population in the world. Um, the total number of prison prisoners in the U.S. is ballooned from 320,000 to 80 billion a year. And taxpayer, taxpayers spend more than $80 billion a year to keep these people locked up. Um, we have this new idea, this, this de-incarceration idea that has been you know, going through society, and it's just not got enough attention. And it's, you know, it's, it's an idea that both uh, conservative and liberals can get behind, which is so special behind it. It's, you know. Many people ask why is so many people locked up, and you know, it's, it's because of what we did in the past, and that's why so much people are locked up now that we're paying for it. In the 70s and the 80s, there was this huge drug um, epidemic, so to, so to speak. And we have these new drugs, we had drug laws implemented to, you know, um, we had drug laws that made minimum sentences, minimum drug sentences, um, penalties for people. And that's why, you know, after three strikes, you have to go to jail for 20 years, whether for anything. And, you know, even if it's a minor crime, really doesn't matter. And after a while, a lot of the, <laughs> what do they do? A lot of these people, one out of four people who get out of jail happen to go back. And that's because of our ideas as a society of what a prisoner is. You know, we think of these people as animals instead of, you know, humans. And that doesn't allow them to get a to, to get a job. Once they get out they look for jobs and we see that they have a uh, a, a, a rap sheet, they can't go back. And they're forced to go back to what they went to jail for. If that's selling drugs or prostitution, that they have to go back because they need money. They really need money to, to build in society. Um, some people say, what are the solutions? And right now, to implement it, it's, you know, implement a solution is not so easy, so to speak. Um, Texas um, actually is one of the, the more liberal states, well, not liberal, and conservative, it has a liberal technique to this. Instead of sending people to jail, they send them to rehab. And it has actually saved, uh, you know, money, tax money, and has dropped the prison population by 3%. And they have started closing prisons now for the first time in 160 years. Now other states are following their president. And that's, it's, it's remarkable to think that this much change has, has brought so much, you know, differences. Um, uh, many people like uh, Texas and uh, Kansas, they have done the same thing. And Hawaii has brought this new program where elders, of the older people, they, they go to jail and they, they're allowed to leave early because of their age. And, you know, they're probably not going to do anything because they're older. Um, you know, people realize, don't realize this is a problem, but this is a huge problem. We're wasting $80 billion in, in, of taxpayer money on prisoners for, for little drug offenses. And it's just really, you know, it's not fair to the people, it's not fair to prisoners, and it's not fair to taxpayers. So something needs to change.